Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, et bienvenue à la rencontre de Jean-Yves Kennedy de New York. Today, I'm excited to share with you a journey in Air France's La Première from New York to Paris. Hello, YouTube travelers, and welcome to the Gentleman of Fortune channel. Join me on my travels around the world, and together we'll review the latest in flight and lounge offerings, find out how various airlines' first and business class products stack up, sample their catering, and indulge in their finest champagnes. Together, we'll experience the best of the best, and maybe some more obscure ones too. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. And now I invite you to sit back and relax as we get this next adventure underway. Air France passengers traveling in first class who originate in New York are eligible for a car service that will drop you just outside of Terminal 1 at a dedicated lounge space for check-in. The ticketing agent who was awaiting me at the counter when I arrived has briefly disappeared with my travel documents but shall return shortly with the boarding pass in the coveted red folio. And now, with boarding passes in hand, that same ticketing agent is providing me with a private escort through security into the lounge. The personal escort continues into the main Air France lounge used by business class passengers before traveling upstairs to the second level via elevator, where we find a lounge within a lounge specifically for those in La Première. Welcome to the Air France La Première private lounge. If you prefer to skip to the onboard review, you can jump ahead to the six minute mark. As you can see from the initial glance around, it's a very nicely appointed room with floor to ceiling windows that offer a commanding view of the Terminal 1 tarmac and even a view of the skyline in Manhattan in the distance. The lounge also doubles as a gallery as they've allowed some of their walls to be used by an artist to promote portions of their collection. Now let's have a look at some of the refreshments available. Over in this corner of the room, there are several shelves that house an intriguing collection of liquors. And out the window, you can see the first of two Air France Boeing 777s that will be parked at Terminal 1 this evening. And on this counter over here, we have a wide selection of coffee, teas, and snacks. These little chocolate caramel biscuits are quite tasty. While I believe that some of the lounge's food options have been limited recently, they do have pre-packaged sandwiches available in the mini-fridge, along with an assortment of other soft drinks. In addition to Nespresso coffee pods, the tea lover will be impressed with the assortment of Pelé de Thé flavors. Had it not been for the fact that I was trying to conserve my appetite for the plane, I don't know if I would have been able to resist these tasty looking yogurts. Here's a list of wines they have on offer in the lounge. And of course they have plenty of stemware so that you and your guests can enjoy your drinks. Now down here underneath they have several more bottles on hand for easy access. No one will go thirsty in this lounge.
with the lounge tour done, I can finally sit down to relax and enjoy some of that bubbly. After enjoying the lounge for a while, the second Air France Boeing 777 makes its appearance. I'm encouraged to see that global travel seems to be resuming, although slowly. The wall of windows certainly affords some great views of the tarmac and the runways, but unfortunately also lets in a lot of light, which has rendered the room a little bit too warm for my liking. The air conditioning doesn't seem like it can quite keep up. Hopefully it'll be more comfortable on the aircraft, and judging from the activity out on the ramp, I think it'll probably be soon time to go. Sure enough it is, and once again, the private escort resumes to take me through the terminal, through the security at the gate, and directly onto the aircraft. So here we have our first look at the Air France La Première first class cabin on the Boeing 777. I have to say, it's even more impressive in real life than it is in the photos. As a first class passenger, you have the option to board first or last, but I'm glad that I chose to board early so that I'd have a chance to look around. Here we see one of several storage containers featuring a power outlet, and under the next flap is a very large tray table. In the seat is a small pillow that could be used for your head or lumbar comfort, and within reach from the seated position is another compartment featuring the in-flight entertainment controller, the headphones, as well as a power and USB outlet. Lastly, there's a nice little lamp featuring a stylized version of Air France's Hippocamp logo. Now here's a look at some of the amenities that were delivered to the seat after I arrived. First up, in this stylish felt pouch, is a pair of pajamas or loungewear. I'm impressed with the finishing details like the tag, the button, and the leather trim, even if it doesn't quite mate up properly with the edge of the flap. The pajamas themselves are nice, with a white piping along the edge of the pocket and on the cuffs. And now for this amenity kit. I'm very impressed with this indeed. It's a nice leather box that pivots open. Let's see what we've got inside. Uh, it looks like a very nice pen. Uh, sorry for the delay here. I'm looking through the camera, so it's hard to focus. It's actually got the Ippocamp logo again on the pen. Very nice. And here we have a wooden comb. Oh. It has the logo on here as well. That's pretty impressive. And a package of earplugs with La Premiere branding on it. They've gone all out there. And let's see what this is here. Okay, we've got uh, protective covers for the headphones. And here we've got the obligatory eye mask. Oh, but it's very soft on the inside. I like that. And here it appears we have a small package of cosmetics from the brand Carita. Let's see what we've got inside this bag. Okay, first up we've got Lagoon Cream. I'm not sure exactly what that is, presumably something for the under eye. Let's see, next up we've got Progressive Neomorphous. And it looks like a filler. Oh, this one's for the eyes. And here we have a firming cream for youthful hands. And finally we have another filler cream. This one is a anti-wrinkle cream. And the last thing we have in the box is a little promotional material from Carita. A little booklet uh, with information on the different cosmetics that they've included. Ah, I see. The Lagoon Cream is inspired by Polynesia. Yorana. Well, I am duly impressed with this little box. Pretty high quality. Let's take a look at it a little bit more closely. Now here's a look at the decidedly less captivating personal safety travel kit. Mask, sanitizer, wipe, check, check, check. Now the ottoman across from you doubles as a second seat. Great for having a guest dine with you. And underneath that, additional storage, which features a pair of slippers as well as a nice blanket. 
Here's a look around the cabin from the seated position with all of the curtains open. Another traveler has joined me in seat 1A, so I aim to give them a little privacy. One last thing to note is a pet peeve of mine, no personal air vents. The crew are quickly back in my good graces, however, with a box of nice looking chocolates and some almond biscotti. Out of respect for you, the viewer, I think I owe it to you to test those chocolates to see how good they are. Oh, very good. And now for a look at the menu and beverage offerings for today's flight from New York to Paris. I've tried to keep it moving slowly, but if you need more time, you can always pause the video. And right on cue, after being enticed by the menu's offerings, the gracious flight attendant offered me a glass of 2006 bubbly. And shortly after that, a proper cold towel. With all the passengers now on board, we enjoyed a relatively expeditious taxi, just as the sun was setting out west over the Manhattan skyline. And now, as we take the runway and prepare for takeoff, I'll return the sound so that those of you who are fond of hearing those General Electric GE90 engines spool up can do so as the captain pushes them up to full power. serenity of the Air France Le Premier cabin. You'll notice that now that we're airborne, some of the privacy dividers have been raised. Also, you'll notice that these curtains can be drawn, and they have magnets inside of them to hold them together for complete privacy. My cabin mate is now ensconced in the privacy that the suite offers with the curtains drawn. As for me, I want to ensure that the flight attendant has unfettered access to deliver a delicious meal. Up first is the amuse-bouche, where the dipping sauce unfortunately seems to have been a bit errant and destroyed the aesthetic. Nevertheless, the spring roll was fresh and the ham offered a nice salinity. The table setting was replete with personal salt and pepper grinders, as well as two salad dressing options. Additionally, a box of cashews and cranberries showed up, though it seems more like an afterthought from the drink service. Aha, uh -huh, now we are getting into the good stuff. Here we have a personal serving of caviar, with a complement of garnishes, and we even have an appropriate spoon. Wow, this tasted fantastic. Next, the flight attendant proactively amended the meal service to cater to my new world predilections by delivering the salad course. And what a salad it is, made with an impressive array of ingredients available to select from the menu. There's also a variety of warm breads. For the soup course, we have the cream of truffle, which I paired with the merceau. To be honest, I found the flavor of the soup a little bit too subtle. 
For the entree, I had the chicken supreme with the chestnut confit and broccolini. Disappointingly, chicken was a little bit too dry, and this is even with the tricks they employ to try to keep it succulent. Next up, we have a cheese course, and I took this opportunity to order a beautiful pear eau de vie. It was remarkably strong, yet clean, with a delightful pear aftertaste. For the dessert, they brought this truffon with a nice thick chocolate ganache base and a light airy mousse topping. In addition, there was this nicely presented bowl of mixed fruit. To wrap it all up, I enjoyed an Italy espresso with a nice rich crema. Now before my nap, here's a look at the first class lavatory. Once again, we have proper cloth towels. And over here, dental kits, makeup removal pads. Here's a small refreshing towelette. And up here, some larger cool towels. More makeup pads, a couple of items from Carita and a nice bar of soap with the Ipocamp logo. Back at the seat, here's a look at the small storage closet for storing your jacket or clothes. And now here's a look at the seat made into a fantastic bed. This really has to be one of the most comfortable beds in the sky, measuring around seven feet from end to end and featuring a mattress pad that's more than an inch thick. The automatic blinds are controlled from this panel here, which also includes seat control buttons. And as if we hadn't eaten enough just over two hours ago, it's now time for breakfast. Here we have the scrambled eggs on toast with truffle sauce, which is beautifully presented. Additionally, it was served with this beautiful pinwheel of grapefruit and orange slices, as well as some breakfast pastries. I also enjoyed a pot of tea. There were a great many flavor options, and I selected Big Ben, which I presumed was an English breakfast. Because when my breakfast order was taken, I queried the flight attendant as to her recommendation, she also brought me the other option, the French toast. I'm renaming this dish Caramel Perdu, since the sauce never showed up. Now here's a look at one last feature, a very high quality pair of noise cancelling headphones by the brand Denon. They're very comfortable with plush padding, but truth be told, I didn't use the IFE on this flight, since one, it was very short, and two, I travel so often that there's very seldom movies that I'm interested in seeing that I haven't already. The cabin service concluded with the parting gift of tasty looking dark chocolate orange flavored branches. As we descended through the clouds towards Paris, a beautifully colored patchwork of farmer's fields was revealed. Overall, this was a great flight. There were a few missteps with the meal service, but the most egregious issue I didn't discuss yet. Despite there only being two passengers in first class, when they came to take my dinner entree order, I was told that I could only choose from two of the three options because the other passenger had selected the third. Frankly, I was shocked that as one of only two first class passengers, I wouldn't be given the option of what was potentially my first choice entree. Even if you give the company the benefit of the doubt that in a best case scenario they're trying to conserve energy and minimize food waste, they need to come up with a system whereby you can order your first selection, such as Singapore Airlines Book the Cook. Ultimately, despite this, as I said earlier, I really enjoyed this flight, and I found that the cabin crew were genuinely friendly and took pride in the service that they provided. After our arrival at Paris as Charles de Gaulle Airport, we had an unfortunate delay whereupon we had to wait for approximately 20 minutes on a taxiway while we waited for our gate to become available. After a bit more taxiing, we ultimately made it to our arrival gate. Or so I thought. 
As the plane rounded the corner into its parking stand, we lost momentum and started rolling backwards. That must have been disconcerting for the pilots, but not to worry, they goosed the power and we eventually made it to the gate. We're at the base of the air stairs, a very nice BMW sedan car was waiting for me to take me directly to the Air France La Première First Class Lounge, which is newly opened after being shuttered for 13 months. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. And as always, until the next video, safe travels.